Alright, in this video, I'm going to solve this very interesting and tricky JavaScript question that's going to really test your problem solving knowledge when it comes to JavaScript. So let's dive right in. So over here, you can see I have this function count and here you can see I have a bunch of console logs. So the whole point of this question is you're not going to change this function count at all. You're going to keep it as it is, but you have to implement the contents within the function count in such a manner that it produces the certain outputs. So if console log of count is called first, it should return one. If console log count is invoked again, it should return two. Then it's also saying that this might have a reset property, which if you invoke, the entire thing is going to become zero. And then if you call console log of count again, then it should return one. So how are we going to do this? The complicated part here is we cannot, let's say, create an outer variable over here, something like this, and then do val plus plus or something like that. We are not allowed to do something like this. We are not allowed to change anything outside the environment of the function count. We have to do everything right over here. Basically, we have to create a function count that allows us to do all this. So it's pretty confusing because you would wonder that without having a global variable, how are we going to call count twice and hold its previous value and then return its new incremented value? Or how are we going to use something like count.reset? Because when count is invoked, if it can return a number, how can it also contain a reset property? It's pretty confusing. So basically this function also returns an incremented number as compared to its previous value. And it also has a reset property. Now that's pretty confusing if you think about it. How would you go by this if you can't create a global variable outside the function count? Or there's no point of creating a reset object over here because this is not how JavaScript works syntactically. And how would you differentiate between when we call count, we should return the incremented value versus when we call reset, we should call the property reset. How are we going to do that? Because this is not going to work, right? If I do something like this, but this won't work. So let's say I do something like console.log hello. And let's say I comment these two lines and I run. So you see, I get an error that count.reset is not a function. So you have to attach the reset property to this count object itself, which is a bit confusing. And this is not syntactically right. So how would you do it? Well, the best way to do something like this, where you need to keep reference of a global variable, but you have to implement it without manipulating this function count at all, is by using closures. All right. So let's use closures to implement something like this. So what I'm thinking to do is I can keep this like this, or I can also make this count an arrow function. Remember, the whole point is you cannot create anything outside of this environment, but the count needs to be a function. I can make this an arrow function as well, right? That doesn't matter. So let's say I can do something like const count. This will be an arrow function, which is also fine because it's just a function in the end. Now I'm going to manipulate this to create these outputs. So in closure, if you remember how closure works, that closure always returns a function. All right. And that function holds a value as a reference in its global context. So in this function itself, we can return something like a function like this. We can return something like this and we can create a value over here. Let's say something like let counter equals zero. And this value is always going to be this function's global value. All right. But at the same time, we're ensuring all of this stays within this count function. So nothing is present outside of this count function. And when we invoke this, everything within this content should invoke and work. So now it's evident that count is a function. So when I do console log count, I need one. Now, how is that going to happen? So what I'm going to do over here is notice this. I'm going to take this counter. I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to increment it. All right. And let's say I'm going to return this value. So return plus plus counter. All right. So now let's just see what happens if I just console log this. If I do a run, you see, so count at the moment is nothing but this function. All right. So, so you see what happens? Count at this moment is nothing but this function. And when we invoke it, we get this function. So count is this function right now. So how do we make sure that right from the get go, right from the beginning, count is this function rather than this function returning this function. So right now, when I reach this line, count is this function. When I invoke count, this entire function returns this. So when count is invoked, we get this, this function return, as you can see over here. But we need to make sure that when we invoke this, we are able to invoke this right away so that we get the updated counter value. Now, how would we do that? Well, to do that, we can use something called an immediately invoked function where what I'm going to do is I'm going to directly invoke this right at the starting of our application itself. 
I'm going to do something like this. So I'm invoking this right away. So when const count is equal to nothing but the result of this function. So this function that count was, since I'm using an ify, I'm directly invoking, I'm immediately invoking this function. So const count is going to become the result of whatever this function returns, which is this function. So when we reach to this line, count will be equal to this function. So now if I console log, you see we get the value one. All right. So now if I, let's say, remove this comment and I run, so you can see I get the value one and two. So that also works perfectly fine. But now the next catch is I need to also call this count dot reset, which is going to reset this counter. So how am I going to do that? That's a little confusing, right? Well, not really. That's also easy. Well, you should remember that everything in JavaScript is an object, right? Everything in JavaScript is an object. That's a pretty famous saying when it comes to JavaScript. So what I can do is this function over here, which count is because this is an immediately invoked function. So count is this function at this line and we are invoking this function. So this function over here, we can attach it the reset property, right? So to do that, what I can do is I will actually name this function. So let's say I'll call this something like function inner func, all right? And then I'll take this inner func. I'll go right over here and this will remain as it is. But right over here, I'll do something like inner func dot reset. And this is also going to be a function. And this is going to just set the counter to nothing but zero. All right. So all I did was I named this function that we were returning. So this count is going to be this inner function, which we invoke. And to that inner function, I attached a property named reset, which all it does is it sets the counter to zero. And because functions are also an object, because everything in JavaScript is an object, I can attach a reset property to the function as well. So now if I just run, I should get one, two, then it should become zero because counter dot, because count dot reset has been called. So let's see if that works. Oh, sorry, my bad. This is just a normal function. So we don't really need this arrow over here. My bad. Now, if I just run this, Okay, so now it says count.reset is not a function. Well, I think that's because we are returning this function over here first, which causes it to not have the reset property attached to it. So what I can do is I can remove this return from here, then go right down over here. Then over here I can return arrow func. So we are creating this inner function, attaching the reset property to it, then we are returning that inner function. So this ensures that when count.reset is called, it's also going to have the reset function, the reset function attached to it. So now if I run, there you go. You see, I get something like one, two and undefined. Obviously that's because I'm not returning anything over here. So I can do counter equals zero, then return counter. Now if I run this, then we get one, two, and then it gets reset to zero. So you see, that's also how debugging works with every single line you implement you can also try to understand what mistakes you have made and you can constantly keep on fixing it that gives you a more real-time approach of thinking rather than memorizing the solution and then just implementing it so then after this let's see what happens if i just invoke console log count once more after resetting the values we should be getting one over here so if i run this you see we get one two zero and then one so one two zero and then one and if i invoke this again and one more time over here. Then I should get one, two, zero, then one, two, three. Let's see what I get. So one, two, zero, and then one, two, three. So that's all for this question. So as you could see, this was a very interesting question. It was also slightly tricky and it utilized the concept of closure in a very efficient way. So if you learn closures using this question, I think you can know and understand JavaScript more in depth because this not only uses closures, it also uses the concept of immediately invoked functions or ifies. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more.